Good morning, and thank you guys for joining us today. We're here with another Eat to Live episode today. Steph Stacy Stacy is here to do um, a vegan um, demo. She is going to give us all the information we need to know about having a uh, plant based diet. Steph, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So um, today we are learning how to prepare uh, crispy heart of palm. Uh, I put in parentheses fish tacos. I don't always like to use substitutes like that, but just so people can kind of get a gist of what we are going for Jennifer, today. We are okay. We are going to make. Um, we're going to make the fish tacos, so or heart of palm tacos. Sorry, there was a little reverb there. But um, I do want to talk, well, first of all, I want to thank you all, Make It Work Nevada, the whole team over there, Aisha, Coach, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I love doing cooking demos, and uh, I'm in the comfort of my home, in my kitchen, which is even better. <laughs> and I'm actually going to be doing, I'm, I'm putting together a uh, cooking class series that'll be uh, subscription-based, and every, like once every, uh, I'm sorry, twice a month. I'll be offering classes like this that'll be live and then they can be replayed back. So I appreciate you all having me because this just builds more interest in the classes that I want to offer. And um, one of the things that I want to stress is not only just the importance of a plant-based diet, but just like balance, period. So I'll be talking about that because eating healthy, of course, is a way to um, be balanced in your diet. But I mean, and be balanced in your lifestyle. But there are also other things that we can incorporate as well, and I'll be doing that as we go along. So, um, feel free to ask any questions as we go along. I know we have a couple of people that are cooking with me, so if I'm going too fast, or if there's something that you don't understand, please feel free to stop me. I can talk and cook at the same time. This is one of my favorite recipes, and I want to introduce my good friend and my neighbor and my cannabis partner in crime. <laughs> <laughs> and a mother and an entrepreneur as well. This is Bianca. She lives right down the street from me. So everybody say hi to Bianca. She's going to be helping me today. Good morning. And then we're also going to be doing a giveaway. So we see these lovely aprons we have on that we're modeling. Come model your apron. We'll be giving away an apron as well <laughs> to uh, a lucky winner. So you pay attention throughout the whole uh, broadcast. And at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to ask the question. Whoever gets the question right first, they get an apron. So. Without further ado, I will um, get into the recipe, and as we go along, I'll talk about the benefits of a plant-based diet and all of that good stuff. So, do we have the recipe pulled up, or should I um, should I wait for that? I have the recipe pulled up too. Can you all hear me? Okay. Feel like I'm talking to myself. I guess y'all can hear me okay. Okay, we are gonna keep going. <laughs> all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get all my ingredients for my Chipotle Baja sauce. And I have for that sauce, um, here we go. I need sour cream. So I'm gonna show you all something. I actually, I said on the recipe, you can do so we're doing vegan, of course. So we're doing vegan sour cream. I said on the recipe you could do regular sour cream for those who couldn't find vegan sour cream. But um, I go to, where do I shop? I shop at usually Whole Foods, Ralph, and Trader Joe's. I went to Whole Foods for this. A lot of people are like, Whole Foods is really expensive. It is. Um, there are other places that you can get things a lot more, uh, a, a, a lot more, a lot cheaper. Trader Joe's is one, but got to understand that Trader Joe's, they don't have a lot of vegan um, stuff. They don't have as much as Whole Foods and Sprouts. So when you go, you may not get like vegan sour cream and stuff like that. But this is a new brand. This is called Forager. I have never tried this brand. So I wanted to try it with you guys and I'll let you know if it's good. But then whenever I see uh, something that's new on the market, I usually will purchase it so that I can let people know whether or not it's good or not. <laughs> and I like this. It says, let good food be. I don't know if you all can see this, but I like that little saying. So 
Um, I'm going to open that because we are going to do make our sauce. And I'm going to get my lines. So a lot of people ask, like, what is the importance of a plant-based diet? Here, I got my line here. And, and I'm just going to roll this lime in my hand. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'll talk about the, oh, Bianca already, okay, Bianca is already on it. She already juiced me. She already got my lines ready for me. But I'm going to show you all how to get the maximum amount of juice from your lines. So before you uh, cut them open, you can, you don't have to, but if they're like really hard, you know, sometimes you get lines that are super hard, then go ahead and roll it on the cutting board. Roll it, roll it, roll it in between your hands on the cutting board. You all can see me doing that. And then it gets softer, and then you can cut it in half, like this, like that, like this. Like Tabitha Brown, see, I love me some Tabitha Brown. <laughs> All right, but um, the importance of a plant-based diet. So I always tell people this, you gotta understand the human body. And understand that the human body is made out of minerals. Um, can you get me a small bowl, a small one? Uh, the human body is made out of minerals and, um, thank you, and vitamins, and these same minerals, well, I say mostly minerals, and water. And these same minerals are found in the earth. The exact same minerals that are in your body are also found in the earth. And then what comes from the earth? Your food. So I always tell people that plant-based diet is the most ideal because um, you're getting all the nutrients that God naturally put on this earth to restore and replenish your body. Now, do you have to be 100% vegan or plant-based? No, you don't have to. I don't believe that you have to. Um, I actually eat fish now. I start, I was plant-based, completely vegan for 15 years. And then when I got pregnant with my son, I started eating fish. No, I don't eat shrimp and crab and all that fish. It's like the, and there's only certain fish that I eat too. But that um, I eat it because I enjoy it, one. And also, it has minerals as well that um, you need for your body. Now, do you have to eat fish in order to get these minerals? No, because I'm actually going to show you all some substitutes. Um, but I am a big proponent of everybody being balanced. So if you like to eat meat, that's fine. Just make sure that it's a small portion of your diet. It doesn't have to be like a big old piece of meat and then no vegetables. That's what I see a lot of people doing is that they're eating too many carbs, um, not there's not enough balance on the plate. So when you look at your plate, it should represent the rainbow. That's why God put all these colors here on the earth: red, red bell peppers, red watermelon, green grapes, um, uh, uh, green broccoli, um, all kinds of things, all the different colors. Eggplant, purple, you know. Um, so I just encourage people to eat from the rainbow. Eat from the rainbow. Eat from from everywhere. So you're gonna see when we make this dish full of colors, that means it's full of nutrients, and I'm excited. So, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make our chipotle baja sauce. So I got limes here, and for those who are following along, I have a line of citrus squeezer, because I, I squeeze way too much citrus. I um, prefer fresh lime juice over the canned one, I mean over the, the bottled ones, just because the bottled ones have so much, uh, they have preservatives in them, it just don't taste the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze did I hear somebody so say that's something? why you're squeezing that line? Um, you have a couple of questions. They that's would like to know does it matter if it's organic or not? And they also want to know the difference between lines and key lines. Oh, good question. So the first, does it matter if it's organic or not? Ideally, you want to buy organic whenever possible because I mean that's the ideal way to eat, right? He doesn't it's not spray with pesticides and things like that. But the reality is that a lot of people, especially in our community, in the African-American community, we're already in food deserts. I'm not saying that anybody here who's watching this in a food desert, but when I do these, I try to really make it realistic for people. So don't get too caught up in whether or not stuff is organic or not. Um, if you can purchase organic, if, if you can um, afford organic, then absolutely. But if you can't, don't worry about it. Just get what you can. Um, one of the things that I encourage people to do, too, is to um, go to the farmer's market because there's a lot of farmer's markets here in Vegas. So every Wednesday, me and my family, uh, we go to the, well, either me or my mom, we go to the farmer's market here on Rampart in, what is it, Washington? Out in Vegas. In Vegas. Rampart in Vegas. And I get um, most of my fruits and vegetables from the farmer's market. And those are um, nine times out of ten going to be organic. And so I'm going to do um, key jump in things. Oh, yeah. yeah. What'd you say? I was going to jump in and, and say, um, Winco also has a huge plant-based and organic 
and vegan section too. But I forgot you were answering the question about the difference between limes and key limes. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Is that better at all? A little bit better. I think, go ahead, you can keep talking. I wanted to see, I wanted to respond though. I couldn't hear. I was going to go ahead and let you respond to the difference between limes and sea limes, but I was just butting in to say that Winco did have um, a large vegan and organic section. Um, I'm new to being vegan, me and my kids, and that's where we go. Yes, you were saying Winco. Mm -hmm. Yes, Winco is one of my favorite stores. And it's open 24 hours. Not all about, how could I forget about Winco? Oh my gosh. So yes, I do go to Winco a lot, especially when the restaurant was open. I would go there because we would buy like our big bags of texture vegetable protein and stuff, like the 50 pound bags and stuff um, from Winco. So yes, you are absolutely right. And there are three locations. They just opened up one by my house on Buffalo and the freeway. And uh, yeah, and the Trader Joe's is there too. So it's great. So yes, you're absolutely right. Um, the difference between key limes and limes are just key limes are smaller. Um, so I don't generally use key limes because they are so small and usually when I'm using limes I'm trying to get the juice so uh, I know people use key limes because they're a little bit stronger they use them in um, pies and things like that but for me I, I usually just use the regular lime so that's really the difference is just the size honestly and then they may come from they may come from key uh, the key limes probably come from key West Florida <laughs> and Mexico yeah and other limes they just grow wherever so you have okay. another question, Chef. They want to know, um, is there any particular fish you eat? Yes, so I like salmon, um, but I like it super, super, super well done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and while we're talking, I'm gonna put my uh sour cream in here too. Um, but here are here's the two tablespoons of lime juice. You guys can see that I did that because I want to go ahead and make sure we're moving along too. So I have a half a cup measuring cup here. And I'm going to go ahead and just scoop out my sour cream. And I like um, salmon. And so we put three, four, three quarters of a cup. That's a lot. We're making a lot of this. You know, I'm just going to do a half a cup. If you all are following along, just do a half a cup. And because we don't, unless you got a lot of people in your family, but I don't know if we need that much. Oh, wait. So I'm making stuff for Bianca's family, too. Let me go ahead and follow my first mind. <laughs> Bianca was like, I'm helping you so I can eat too. I'm like, absolutely. I'm, I'm learning with you. She's I'm learning. learning. Yeah, she's been wanting to learn this recipe forever. Thank you. Um, so I eat salmon. What else? Um, that's really like it. I don't really eat too. It depends on, uh, it depends. Like I, I, I don't eat fish that much. That's why it's kind of hard for me to answer the question because um, that's really like the only the only one, and I only eat it usually when I'm out and stuff like that. So to answer your question, salmon is the one that I eat the most. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and, oh, the chipotle. So, oh, I wanted to say this too about this recipe. So whenever I'm cooking recipes also, depending on what ethnicity of food I'm cooking, I will go to that shop, to that store in order to shop for my ingredients. So because this is more Mexican inspired, I actually went to Cardena they have La Bonita here as well, but I actually go, I like Cardenas the best, and I go to the one by the Meadows Mall, and I go there to purchase my ingredients if I'm making Mexican food. If I'm making um, Asian food, then I usually go to the Asian market. I don't know the name of the Asian market, but it got, because it got some writing on it, I don't understand, but <laughs> it's on Decatur and Spring Mountain, and it used to be next to a Big Lots, the Big Lots Clothes. Greenland. Is that what it's called? Greenland? Yeah. So, I don't know. She said it was called Greenland. But it's, there are a bunch of shops over there, and I usually go there to get my um, my Asian and stuff. If, um, yeah, so, I mean, just go to where, like, whatever ethnicity you're, you're making, just go to that, that spot. So, anyway, okay, so here I got um, chipotle peppers in adobo sauce right here. So, I'm just going to take a little bit of the, it says two chipotles in adobo and mince them up. I'm gonna get. Let me put it on my on purple cutting board. Thank you, Bianca. It's always good to have a sous chef in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm gonna put some sauce in here, and then the other. I'm gonna cut up the peppers. But I'm gonna put it on my um, cutting board. Uh, let me get the other one. 
I'm gonna put it on the, the darker cutting board because a lot of times, you know, these things will stain your white cutting board. So that's why I have dark and I have a light cutting board. Mommy, I'll cough it. I'm gonna cough it a lot. And this is my son who is just coming in here. I'm coughing a lot. I don't need some vitamin C. Okay, you have to get some vitamin C later, Zion. So I'm also a mom for those who um, don't know of a six-year-old named Zion. So, Zion, get some water. Hold on one second, y'all. After you uh, wash off my hand. All right, so we got the Chipotle and adobo sauce. I got cilantro. I love cilantro. Some people don't. Vitamin C is going to work better because okay. it's more vitamin I'm going to get you some vitamin C. Sorry, y'all. All right, so here's my um, cilantro that I got from the market as well. And it says two teaspoons, but I'm going to be a little bit more gracious because I love cilantro. It's interesting because some people don't like cilantro. Oh, and the last thing in here is salt. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt. That's probably an eighth of a teaspoon because you can always add more. Remember, you can always add more. You can't take away. So, and then I'm just going to take my whisk and just whisk this together. And the color looks really great. We're going to see about this sour cream. This sour cream, though, this one in particular is made out of cashews and coconut milk. It looks good. It looks creamy. It smells amazing. I know Rachel Ray is always talking about smell of vision Can you guys see? Here. Whip it, whip it, whip it. All right. Oh yeah, you kind of do need this sauce because I like I like sauces. I, I'm into sauces and condiments and all kinds of stuff. You look in our fridge, we got every condiment you can think of. <laughs> that was my dad's doing. He loves some condiments. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and taste this. Wonderful. That's it. Doesn't need anything else. Ooh, and it got a little kick to it at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, Set this aside. Do you, do you have the, the stems for more flavor? Um, you so that's a good question. Bianca just asked, you know what I looked out. Bianca just asked if I add the stems for more flavor. And the answer is usually not. It just depends on what I'm making. If I have um, my food processor and I can chop up the stems real fine, then yes. If I'm making salsa, then I throw the stems in there because that's just easy, easy peasy. Um, and it blends up really nicely, but the, um, you should keep the stems for the cilantro and use them if you can because that's where the majority of the flavor is. All right, so the yeah, next- You got a question real is, quick. They said um, they heard salt is bad. Is there a better one to choose over another? They said they heard that what? Salt is bad. Salt, salt, is there salt's one not bad. Over yeah, another. No, salt's not bad. I mean, there's some other, you don't, so first of all, you don't have to add salt. Um, but salt is not bad, but you should get sea salt or you should get Himalayan sea salt. Himalayan sea salt is like the pink sea salt. I think I have some too. Yeah, we have a minute. You gotta look up here. I might have some Himalayan sea salt. Um, that is actually better uh, than regular salt. But uh, salt's not bad for you. You just can't use a lot of it. All right, and then if you're, thank you. So this is a Himalayan pink salt crystals. Can you guys see that bottle? So you can get, you can use this as well. But if you do have high blood pressure and you're like on medication and that kind of thing, then I do recommend eliminating the salt until you can get that under control, you know, so. Yeah, so that was a good question. So Bianca, I'm gonna get my, uh, my, my little plates here because we're gonna get the heart of palm. So she she wanted me to explain the difference between salt and MSG, because you really gotta look at your ingredients. But before we do that, hold on, let me let you look at the heart of palm. Can you guys see that? So what is heart of palm, first of all? It is the heart of a palm tree, like the middle of a palm tree. What they do is they uh, take, take like the middle, the inner core, and then you can eat this. I don't know how somebody discovered that. That's kind of crazy. Right. <laughs> Somebody was like, oh, let me see if I can eat the middle of a palm tree. But, you know, it works. And this is really high in protein. It's low in fat. Um, there are so many. It's so versatile. There's so many things you can do with it. You can chop it up, put it in salads. Um, it, people make, quote unquote, vegan calamari with it. I've never tried that before. 
um, I'm kind of privy to the the heart of the um, tacos that we're gonna make. Um, but it's amazing. I love heart of Palm. And you can find it almost anywhere, like at any grocery store. You just kinda gotta ask because it's not a well known product, but um you can definitely find it um almost everywhere. And it's and it's inexpensive too. That's another thing. You get a can of heart of palm for like a dollar fifty, two dollars, something like that. So maybe two fifty at the most. So um Krista said, oh, I am loving this. Didn't know that about Heart of Home. What'd you say? Krista has a comment. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, I'm loving this. I didn't know anything about Heart of Home. Yes, Heart of Home is amazing. All right. And so I'm going to, so this one's already drained because it's going to come in water. And then it says cut them um, each piece in half crosswise. But that's only if your pieces are long because sometimes the pieces will come out long. These came from Bianca. I don't know where you got these, but these are bomb. And they're already cut in half because I wanted my heart of palm to be small. Like, I wanted it to be short and not, like, long. So if you have the long ones, if you follow them long, then go ahead and cut them in half. And then what I'm doing is just taking my hand, like the palm of my hand, like heart of palm, palm, get it? Yeah, okay. And then <laughs> just press down. And then I'm just going to press the, put the pieces on the plate because I don't want, um, Big pieces. So this is the thing. If you don't cut this, the heart of palm up, and you try to eat it, cook it, and then eat it like in this big chunk, it it doesn't it doesn't taste very good. So make sure that you're pressing each one down with your palm, and uh, and that's it. And it's okay if a few pieces fall apart. It's no problem. And we're going to add all our spices in a bowl next. And a lot of this stuff can be prepared ahead of time. So that's what I do. Like if I'm catering and stuff, um, you know, all this stuff has to be done the day before, of course. Um, but if you're cooking at home, it really doesn't take that long to do this. And if you have kids, you can have your kid come and they can do this part. I'm sure they would love that. I want to do it. I want to yeah, do it. Right. Zion said he wants to do it. You can do it if you go wash your hands real quick. He's gonna come help me, y'all. He helps me in kitchen sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. You have to. I said, wash your hands. You can't just. I'm not. <laughs> oh man, it's really important to teach kids. You know, to cook in the kitchen. I'm gonna be doing more videos cooking with kids too. Um, but Zion is sick, so there's only so many things that he can do. As a six-year-old, but you know, you do age-appropriate things. Like I just started letting him use a knife, like a small, small, uh, sharp knife, and he can cut little stuff with. So he's been doing good. <laughs> Learn how to cook. He knows how to turn on the on the uh, oven. oven, the yeah, oven, not the stove. <laughs> and uh, so he can. Yeah, that's me. I want to know what exactly does butter palm taste like. What'd you say? Alcinia would like to know what does the heart of palm taste like? Oh, what does it taste like? Uh, it's kind of bland. Um, let me I see. do know how to make waffles. Let me taste it again. Because I rarely, I've only tasted it once, <laughs> like not cooked. Mm. The turkey, sometimes it has that vinegar taste from the... Yeah, it kind of has a little vinegar taste from the brine but that it was sitting in, but... It doesn't taste like anything, really. A little bit of, it's a little sweet, just a, a tad on the sweet, sweeter side <laughs> for um, a vegetable. <laughs> but um, it's something you just got to taste it. <laughs> you just got to try it. All right. And then you have Vita from Full Spectrum Birth Services. She said, this is such great information. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You well, Was there a question with that? Oh, okay. You are so welcome. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is mix together our spices. So this is the thing that I tell people about vegan food. Look, when you're cooking vegan food, you have got to use spices. You can't just use the traditional salt, pepper, lorry seasoning. I don't even I don't even have lorry seasoning, which is funny because most people have that in their pantry and I don't because I use so many different spices from different countries and things like that. Um, so I'm going to add, a, add the, all the spices and mix. So let me go ahead and get, yep, that will work. Um, you know what? Hold on. Let me see something. Uh, add the 
flour and half and spice. Okay, yeah, I'll use this one. Yeah. Okay. So the spices we are going to use. If you could rinse this for me. Thank you. All right. So the first spice we got is cumin. I used to be a cumin fanatic. Like I would put cumin in way too much stuff. It was ignorant. <laughs> Better now. People, I was overdosing on the cumin, but I love cumin. So we're gonna do two teaspoons of that. And you can follow on your recipe. I'm actually going to add a little bit more because I'm legit feeding one, two, three, four, five. The girl's going to eat yeah. six, seven. So I'm feeding seven people over here because <laughs> that's what we do as neighbors. We help each other out. She brings me cannabis. I feed her food. That's how it works. Seriously, like no joke. <laughs> and we watch each other's kids, which is good. Um, so I'm going to put three teaspoons of cumin, but if you're following along, you have the recipe, just make sure you're following your recipe. Actually, I'm going to do four, I'm going to do like almost double. Um, love cumin, love cumin. The next thing I'm going to need is garlic and onion, granulated garlic and onion. So there's the garlic. So what do we have? A tablespoon, I'll probably do two tablespoons of that. So these are things, cumin, garlic, these are things that you probably already have in your pantry. And this is the thing for me, like I usually, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, I usually do not use measuring spoons. I just have these out for the sake of this demonstration. <laughs> but anybody knows when you come to my house and I'm cooking for you, I'm just shaking and baking, literally shaking, shaking stuff in there and, and seeing how it's going to come out. All right, so granulated onion and garlic I have already, and then Old Bay is the business. You got to have some Old Bay in your repertoire. You're going to cook. I you love Old Bay. Okay. So, we're going to do says two teaspoons Old Bay. You can do two teaspoons in yours. Again, I'm, I'm doing extra. I'm going to do four. That's not going to be in my part of palm, but we got plenty. All right, and then a teaspoon of chili powder. Chili powder is tricky. Like you can't over, you can start, you can overdo it really easily on chili powder. So, and then it makes your whole dish taste like it ain't right. So just make sure you eat up on that. And then I had a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper on the on the recipe, but um, I got some original Creole seasoning. That's gotta have that in your repertoire as well. And so I'm gonna use that instead because it gives it the heat but it also gives it more flavor. I'm all about the spices and the seasonings. Because people are like, how do you make your food? Why does your food taste like, taste so good? And I'm like, cause man, see my spice cabinet, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so it says a quarter teaspoon, I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon in there. Oh my goodness. It's already going up my nose, see? Mm -mm. Let me mix this up. Ooh. All right. Now, dose. It says on the recipe that you can add Ooh, excuse me. Okay, I gotta move this to the side, y'all, for just for a second. Then we can add dose. That grill season, no joke. Um, dose, you can add dose to your recipe. Here is dose, D U L S E. Can you guys see that? And what it is, is um, a seaweed. So we are making like a quote unquote fake kind of fish. So we want to make the heart of palm taste like fish. So what we're gonna do is add the dose. Um, because dose is seaweed. Seaweed comes from the sea and it tastes like fish here. Bianca's going to show you. And I got that from Whole Foods and I got it for like, it wasn't that expensive, maybe like four bucks or five bucks or something like that. And it a little goes a long way. You don't need, I probably buy one of these like once every four or five months. Um, and so I was going to say, so seaweed comes from the sea and then fish eat seaweed. So that's why that's why seaweed tastes like fish. It's more like fish tastes like seaweed, if that makes any sense, because sea fish eat the seaweed. And so instead of using any fish products to make our heart of palm taste like fish, we're just going to use what the fish eat, which is dulse, which is nori. That's another kind of seaweed. Um, what are some other ones? Um, my mind. Wakame is another kind of seaweed. Um, there's plenty. There's a bunch of them and they're all great and I love seaweed because it's high in iodine for those who don't want to use salt You can use seaweed instead because it's a natural source of iodine that your body still needs it. again The minerals that your body needs naturally comes from the earth comes from the sea. It's great. All right, so 
I'm gonna do adults, and it says one tablespoon. I'm gonna do two. Actually, I'm gonna do one and a half because it's also kind of strong. Yeah. Okay. And then nutritional yeast. Oh, I left my new. Can you get my mm -hmm. nutritional yeast out the um, cabinet? It should be a bag. Um, right here. It should be a bag in there. And I'm going to skip the nutritional yeast while she's getting that, and I'll get my all-purpose flour. So, nutritional yeast, I'll just tell you about it. It's one of my favorite, and she's, um, Bianca's getting it for me now. Look in the white bag. Bianca, like a white. Oh, there we go. There could be more, too. I think I might, I might need more. But anyway, I want to show you guys this. This is a small bag I got from Trader Joe's. Um, it's not labeled, though, B. Oh my goodness. Can y'all see this? Okay, there we go. Nutritional yeast. So nutritional yeast is used by almost every, it's used by every vegetarian and vegan I know. <laughs> and um, it's high in B vitamins, which is why I like it. It's not the kind of yeast that you use to make bread rise. Um, this is strictly for flavoring and seasoning your food. When you use nutritional yeast in certain ingredients, it, it gives things like a cheesy flavor. So that's why we use nutritional yeast. Now, for this, I'm not going for a cheesy flavor but, I, flavor, but I am going for a more enhanced flavor, and this also enhances the flavor of a, of a lot of foods. I don't use it in all ethnicities of foods. It honestly depends on what I'm making. Like, if I'm making Thai and Japanese, I don't use nutritional yeast because generally you're using it for, like, sauces and stuff like that. You can also put it on popcorn. Um, but for those who have been to Simply Pure, we make our cheese sauce, our, all of our cheese sauces, um, and contain nutritional yeast, and that's what gives it that amazing bite. Yep. So Bianca brought me more. So I got this from Trader Joe's, and I got this one from uh, Sprouts. But they sell nutritional yeast everywhere. They even sell it at Winco. So what do I need? I need uh, how much? One and a half tablespoons. So I'm going to do like three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I don't even know if there's enough in this bag. Let's see. One, two. Wow, just enough. Three tablespoons exactly in this bag. Here we go. Toss that. I'm going to get it. Let's see. Can we get you a container? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to get you a I have one at home. I see it. I'm going, yes. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and I have some, too. Some, uh, some containers in there. Okay. Cool. So. We got everything, got all my spices. All right, so it says I need to go ahead and whisk. So I got my whisk here. I'm gonna whisk together my spices. Y'all can see this? Can I help you? Can I do it? Can I do it? Okay, you be watching it here. He wants to do it, so yes, you can do it. <laughs> he is whisking together the spices for me while I get my bowl. So while he's doing that, bless you, now you gotta go wash your hands again. Okay. I told you this, see, it made him sneeze. This spice mixture, whoo, getting up my nose too. So, while, after we do the spice mixture, I'm gonna go ahead and start heating up my oil, but I'm gonna put the oil on really low. So, this is the thing too that people ask, because is frying the healthiest way to eat food? Absolutely not, we all know that. I love fried foods, certain fried foods, but this recipe you can also put in the oven. So if you want to bake this instead of frying it, you are more than welcome to do that. It comes out fantastic. Um, but I am just going to fry because I'm in the mood for fried foods today. And uh, it tastes really good. And uh, yeah, we're going to get to it. Now, the oil. There's different oils that you can use depending on what I'm frying. It depends on what oil I use. I do have the old-fashioned Crisco pure vegetable oil. You can use that, but I, I rarely use that. Um, I prefer to use this, olive oil. Now, this is not, there's a difference between this olive oil and then extra virgin olive oil. This olive oil is a light, extra light tasting olive oil. So it's ideal for sauteing, baking, and frying. Know this, when you have extra virgin olive oil, it has a low smoke point. It has a low smoke point, which means that you cannot heat it past a certain temperature or it's going to become toxic to the body. So please do not fry with extra virgin olive oil. If you want, can you just go ahead and just answer it and hang it up? That phone never rings. Um, but this oil is a regular, um, 
extra light taste olive oil. And so you can use that instead. All right. I'm going to pour some in my pan. Oh, let me show y'all my pan. So we got a lot. I come from a line of cooks, um, people who can cook. Thank goodness. A lot of women in my family can. And uh, we have had this. These, I have two cat, three cast iron skillets. Two that are this size, and I have one that's a small size, but this has been in my family for generations. And, um, the you know, with cast iron, the, the more you use it, the better it gets. The food tastes amazing in this thing. We do so much in these skillets. Um, and so you can use any skillet that you want, but I prefer frying in the cast iron. You just, you know, I feel like I'm calling on the spirit of my ancestors when I'm using that. People be like, that food tastes good. I'm like, yeah, because my great-great-grandmother was in the room, was in the building when I was making it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and turn my oil on low. And I'm putting about a quarter of an inch in there. And I'm just going to kind of monitor it because I don't want it to get off. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add my flour. Now I'm taking another bowl. Y'all can see a bigger bowl. And I'm going to go ahead and add my flour. Let's see how much flour I need. Okay. So I got my measuring cup here. And it says one cup of flour, but I'm going to do two. Boom. I want to make sure I have enough. We all going to be good in the neighborhood today. <laughs> so what kind of flour am I using? This is just an um, unbleached, enriched, all-purpose flour. Um, I, don't, I probably got this from Trader Joe's or I think I got this from Trader Joe's. It looks like their <laughs> brand. Yeah. <laughs> so can you guys see that? Oh, goodness. The light is so bright. Yeah. You said what? Oh, there we go. That's what I'm using. <laughs> yeah. But you can use any kind of flour. Even if you want to use holy flour, you can do that too. All right. And so what I'm going to do is mix in, take half of the spice mixture. And I'm going to put it inside of my flour, just half of it. Amazing. And we're over here. My mouth is still here. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and whisk this together. And then I'm going to take my seltzer water. In this batter, too, you can freeze. Oh, my gosh, y'all. I'm about to sneeze over here. But you want to use seltzer water, mineral water, something like that um, for this recipe. Because it's going to make your um, fish there, your quote, unquote, your batter, like, amazing. So, here, let me pour this in here. And I think on the recipe, it says you need like three quarters of a cup of uh, seltzer water. Excuse me. Per one cup. Thank you. Per one cup of uh, flour. But you're probably going to need a little bit more. Did they put it in the sauce? Yeah. Put it in the sauce. Okay. 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 I see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. So I got to put some elbow, putting some elbow grease in here. You don't want it to be too thin, but you don't want it to be any too thick, but you don't want it to be too thin either. So you just want to kind of add as you go. 
And I'll show you all the consistency in a second. Here, pull the arm um, instructions down. Whew, my arm hurting. I went to the gym this morning too. <laughs> I didn't work my arms out. <laughs> all right. Okay, perfect. So I'm about to show you all. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and drop that. So Bianca just dropped in another tablespoon of the adobo. You do too. The adobo sauce. Yeah, the adobo sauce from the chili. Chiles. And then we're also going to put some mustard in there. Now let me tell you all something. I add mustard to like all my wet batters whenever I'm frying something or baking something. If I'm doing tofu and I want to have a coating on it. I don't know what in the world mustard does, why it works so well in wet batters, but it's amazing. So I got some really regular yellow mustard here, and I'm just going to add, oh, you know what? See, there I go, not using a, a tablespoon. Okay. I'm just going to estimate two tablespoons. One, two. Yeah, no way. It's like a beeping noise. Yeah. Anyway, all right, y'all. I'm going to show you what this consistency is supposed to look like when you grab the food. And I see our oil's getting hot over here. I'm going to bring this over. Can you all see? It's like a batter, so it's not too wet. It's not too... But it's going to coat real nicely. All right. Can you all kind of see that? Here, I'll show you this too. Hope you all can see that. It looks like, there we go. Perfect batter. All right. Now I'm going to add my panko. Something is like some alarm or something going off in my house. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but that's really weird. I don't know what that is. All right, so I got the other half of my batter here. So this is going to be my dry batter. And I like panko because panko breadcrumbs. Here we go. So, Chef, um, for people that are just now tuning in and maybe didn't get the ingredient list and, and everything. Can you tell us from start to finish approximately how long this meal would take us prep and delivery? Yep, from um, start to finish about, i say 30 minutes the, for this particular one, maybe 45 at the most. But, um, and is there anything that you can prep in advance? It's probably going to take me a little longer just because I'm talking, I'm stopping, and things like that. But normally, if you're in your kitchen, about 30 to 45 minutes. Is there anything you can prep in advance if you want to make this for a large group of people? Absolutely. So, I would do my um, wet batter in advance, I would do almost everything in advance. I would do Open, drain the heart of palm. Make sure you have them laid out. You can wrap them. After you see, I have them already here. You can wrap them and put them on uh, in your refrigerator overnight. You can make this wet batter the night before. Just cover it, and then, um, or you can do your and you can do your dry batter the night before. So all of your sauces and stuff are ready. Oh, and the um, chipotle adobo sauce that we made, um, the baja sauce that we made earlier first. You can also um, put that. Well, pretty much everything. The only thing you need to be making is just yeah. frying. Yeah. And I recommend you do that because, like I said, I'm going to have to put this in the fridge. I recommend you do that. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah. I recommend you um, you do that in advance as much as possible because then it just makes it easier the next day if you don't want to you know, do a bunch of extra. So I'm just going to put three cups of the panko in here, which is almost my whole bottle. And I'm just going to take my hand and mix it. My hands are clean. <laughs> and see, so you got spice. So I noticed that the spice mixture, here you go. I put in the panko. Oh, Lordy, it's light. Crazy. Um, anyway, I put it in the panko and I put some of the spice mixture in the, dry, in the wet bag. So you're gonna get double the well, amount of the light. Shh, Zion, please. You can't, okay? Um, 
sorry y'all, it sounds like loud. Okay, so mix that up real good. So now I got my wet, I got my dry. Nope, I'm done with that. No, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and then I need, I guess we can use the, can you um, just wash this off? All right. So, I'm really big on two in the kitchen because a lot of times people are like, how do you get done so quickly? Um, it's because in the kitchen, you want to make sure that you have all of your ingredients and stuff out. Um, that's what takes people the longest is a lot of times in the kitchen I know that they're not prepared so they're um reaching in drawers to get us uh, if you need you know you're gonna need measuring spoons just grab all the measuring spoons don't add grab one you know you're gonna need a knife you know you're gonna need a cutting board you're gonna need all your spices so don't just grab the salt and then go back to the cabinet like a minute a minute later and then grab the cumin like look at your recipe get everything out lay it out on the counter and I promise you'll go like this in the kitchen you'll be surprised at how much um, your mise en place, that's the proper terminology for having all of your ingredients in order, ready to go before you um, cook. So, next thing we're going to do is turn my oil down because it's ready and I don't want it to burn. You don't want to monitor your oil. So, now this is the process. Look at my fingers. You can do this with tongs as well, but I just do it with my hands when I'm at home, especially because, you know, you uh, make your food with love. Now, this is another thing, too. Make sure that what you, when you're in the kitchen, because I tell people the kitchen is the most important room in your house. You can make your family well, or you can kill your family literally in the kitchen. So make sure that your kitchen is clutter-free, that it's clean, the cabinets are wiped down before I start, uh, start cooking. I usually don't have dishes in the sink. Or if I just have maybe a few dishes, but usually I don't have stuff piled up. I always like my kitchen to be clean before I cook. I wipe down the cabinets no matter what, even if it's in the morning time when we clean the kitchen the night before, because you just never know. You just want to start with a clean slate. Also, when you're cooking, when I'm cooking, I'm usually, um, I never cook in a bad mood. Now, I'm, I'm rarely if ever in a bad mood, but when you cook in a bad mood, your food is going to come out crazy all the time it's never gonna come out right so i'm like if you're in a bad mood and you don't feel like cooking then eat out <laughs> for real because it's not you don't even push through it it's that important especially when you're cooking for people because you want your intention and your energy to go into the food and so that's another reason why um i enjoy cooking so much is because i know when people taste it they're like oh my gosh it tastes so good and they're like it's made i'm like it legit literally and legit legitimately was made with love and so um, I usually think loving thoughts while I'm cooking. I'm usually in a, I'm always in a good mood when I'm cooking because I love to cook. I usually have my music on. As a matter of fact, we got it on pause right now. As soon as we turn off the live, we're going to turn our music back on. Um, I usually, sometimes I smoke a little bit before I cook. That's always fun. Or have a glass of wine. Whew. I want to show my nose. <laughs> a shot. <laughs> Whatever you got to do. <laughs> but a lot of chefs, you know, we drink and smoke. That's what a chef do. I don't, I don't know a chef who does not do one or the other. Um, okay, so here we go, y'all. Got a hard palm. I'm about to dip it in the wet batter. Okay, she's gonna bring it. Bianca's gonna bring it closer so you, you guys can see. Yeah. So I dip it in the wet batter. Perfect. And then I'm gonna use my other hand to dip it in the dry batter. Do not use the same hand because this dry batter will lump up on you super quick. So you want to put it in there quickly. You don't want to let it rest in there. Shake it, and then look at that. That coating is like crazy. Oh my God, can y'all see that? <gasps> it's okay. I got stuff all over the floor. Okay. <laughs> all right, we're going to do another one here. The coating is, the batter is everything. So there we go again. You got your, dip it all the way. Make sure you got everything coated. You put it in your dry batter. And this is the part you can have your kids do too. And then there you go on the plate. And you want to go ahead and do all of them. Do as many as you can before you start frying. Um, or just do like maybe a layer on the plate before you start frying. Because you don't want to put like don't do one and then put it in there and then try to do another one. You want to have all of your um, all of your heart of palm in the fryer or the oven if you're doing the oven at the same time so that it's cooking evenly. All right. 
I am excited about this. Y'all can see my floor. I'm dropping stuff all over the place. <laughs> now, what you can do is let the heart of palm sit inside the batter for a little while. It can sit, and sit inside the wet batter for sure, but not the dry. It's already starting to clump up a little bit, but it's all right. And you can double batter it if you want, if you're using like a deep fry. I don't recommend double battering it if you're baking it. But if you're deep frying it, then uh, you can double batter it as well. Okay. I'm going to do a couple more. I'm not going to do all these for the demonstration, but I'll do a couple more. So I'm going to show you all how these tacos about to be lit. We're going to move the camera over. Thank you, Bianca. Mm -hmm. And Bianca is also my makeup artist. We didn't do makeup today, y'all. So don't be like, oh, she ain't do your makeup. <laughs> she didn't do my makeup today, but she generally does my makeup so for beautiful. everything. Oh, so thank beautiful. you. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. No, I didn't want to wear makeup today. I was like, we at home. It's Sunday. We chilling. Okay. I'm going to do like a couple more, and then we're going to move over to the frying station. And if you're doing this at home and you're putting it in your oven, then that is cool, too. Have you tried this with the air fryer? I have not tried this with the air fryer. Um, somebody asked me about the air fryer the other day. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of the air fryer. unless I, I, Because I've tried things in it before and it just don't taste the same. But I get it. I know that it's, it's healthier. Um, the only thing that I've had in the air fryer that tasted okay to me was the french fries. Those were okay. They tasted a little more baked than fried, but um, those were cool. But I've tried so many things. Like I tried to do this this batter uh, with avocado. Um, I tried to do mushrooms, and it just not the same. But for health purposes, if you are really trying to, um, you know, achieve some health goals and you don't want to use a regular fryer, which I totally get, then please by all means use the air fryer. Okay. So we're just gonna use those for now. Do those for now. Okay. Can you lift it up? We're gonna come over here. Yeah. Yee! All right. Can you all see my frying pan and myself? Hey. So. We got our heart of palm here, they're all battered, ready to go. You can use them in the oven, just go, go ahead and throw them in the oven, make sure your oven is hot. So that's another thing, you wanna make sure that your, can't see, mm -hmm. I have to bend down. <laughs> oh man. Um, you want to make sure that your oven, I mean, that your oil is hot. Because one thing I've seen, too, is people, when I taste food, here, let me just come down a little okay. bit. <laughs> I'll just come down a little bit for a second. Oh, Adjust, Bianca's adjusting. What are you trying to do? Pull it up? Yeah, I pulled it up. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, so when you, when you are, here we go. Okay. When um, you are cooking food, I know sometimes when I taste people's fried food, and you know how you get that oil taste in your mouth, you bite into something and it tastes like a bunch of oil, that's because the oil was not hot and or they did not drain it properly so or strain it properly. Um, so make sure that your oil is like piping hot, all right, before you start. And the way I test it, you can get a thermometer, but I just throw a couple of pats of water on there and if it starts y'all hear that crackling that means that the oil's hot so I'm gonna take one and go ahead and put it in there and see I got all of them together because I don't want to start that's why you want to make sure that all of them are already battered because you don't want to start cooking one and then you're like oh my goodness I'm trying to keep up that way i put all of them in here you don't want to crowd them in too tight 
and you're gonna cook them for maybe five minutes or so and i have it on like a medium heat right now kind of medium high heat because i don't want what i don't want is for the outside to be like um all crispy and brown and then the inside is not cooked all the way so to avoid that we just make sure that it's on medium um, okay, and then I just have a basic paper towel here that I put on a baking sheet, and I'm going to drain it on the paper towel when it's done. And in the meantime, in between time, I'll give y'all a little bonus added extra. Chef. Uh-huh. Aisha wants to know if you were going to infuse it with cannabis, when would you be doing that part? When would you add it? Ooh, that's a good idea. That's a good question, Aisha. So what I would do is, um, some people would put it in the oil. I would infuse the sauces, though. I'm a big fan of infusing the sauces. So I would put uh, coconut oil or olive oil inside of the sour cream mixture and do it that way. Or the cannabis spices so there is a company so De so delicious they have a cannabis infused oh bianca bought more well, their spices for me but they also have a cannabis infused thc infused spice packet i would throw that into my dry batter my dry batter too so those are a couple of ways that you can incorporate cannabis yep they sure do <laughs> they have an infused tea and it's bomb i've used it i love it all right so Yes, that's what I do. So when you all come over for uh, dinner parties and stuff, y'all know, I mean, whenever anybody comes to my house, they already know that it's the, they, we're going to have some infused food or some infused something. So that's a given. I'm going to let these go a little bit longer on this side because I want to make sure that these are extra crispy. It's nothing worse than having these particular, this particular dish and then it's not crispy and it's kind of soggy. That's like not cool. So in the meantime... Without burning up my paper towel, I'm gonna. I have another skillet. Told you we have three of them. So I got this one, and what I'm gonna do is turn this one on because I want to brown my tortilla shells a little bit. So here I'm gonna show you all my tortilla shells. Now I don't know. You can get tortilla shells from anywhere. I personally do not get tortilla shells from anywhere except the Mexican market. Anything is below that is, I mean, everything, anything other than getting your tortilla shells from people, from Mexicans is like subpar. And I'm just telling you, it is what it is. So these are Cardenas and they make them fresh like every day. They, they be back there patting the tortillas, putting them through the machine. I mean, it doesn't get any fresher than this. And then I'm making street tacos. So my taco shells are small. Look, they little babies. They little babies. And I love it, and you get all these in the pack, and they smell so fresh. And I can go back and converse with the with the ladies and brush up on my Spanish. All right, y'all, it's time to flip them now. So that's been like what? Is that like six, seven minutes, maybe? So I'm flipping them all one by one. Every time I make these for people, they are like, what? I used to teach cooking classes at my house. I think I'm going to start doing that again, like private lessons. Um, that was really fun. And I actually was private, but it was like I would I would take eight people um, and just do a special class at my house. Yes, at Whole Foods. Zion is talking about when I used to teach at Whole Foods. So I'm going to put a little. What other one? I don't remember you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zion is reminding me. We used to teach cooking classes at um in schools. Well, but when COVID hit, um, I actually had a cooking class I was supposed to do at a school on the 23rd of last month. And then COVID, the school shut down on the 18th. But um, for like a year and a half, I was going into schools and teaching cooking classes. And Zion would go with me. So he was just reminding me of that. That was a lot of fun. And I definitely want to get back into, into that. So, yeah, our last class that we had, um, the last class that we had that we were teaching the kids, 
um, Zion came with me. I had 50 kids in that class. It's crazy. So I just put a little bit of the olive oil on the bottom of here, y'all. I'm going to turn this up. And I'm going to um, just brown my, not brown them, but just warm my um, my shells inside of here. So Chef Stacy, I heard you say that you used to do classes inside of your home and you uh -huh. was thinking about doing that again in small groups. Yes. Would you yes, be considering, um, would you consider doing those like some, like if some of the eight people for each group, would you consider some of those being online as well? Like now, like maybe a Zoom call and Absolutely. maybe some in Absolutely. Well? In, addition to, in addition to doing the subscription-based cooking courses, I can do something where we just have a group of, you know, seven, eight people just on Zoom. And we just do a class, like, and we have wine and we chill. I've seen a couple of comments in here like that they were interested, so that's what made me ask. Absolutely, yes, yes, we can do that. Because I really, honestly, y'all, I really want to show people how to cook, um, like I said, plant, show people how to cook plant-based food and show people, like, how simple it is. And it doesn't have to be complicated, and it can be fun. And, yes, you do have to incorporate a few new ingredients, but for the most part, you know, it, it, it doesn't take too much to do it. And I want to show people um, that it's not overwhelming. People with children, because I have a child, you know, so I know how it gets. You're like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to make for dinner? A lot of it is planning as well, but which I also, you know, teach during the classes. And people have specific questions about how to plan out meals and things like that. Um, so, yes, to answer your question, I am going to be, I would love to do more of those. And um, I like the in-person classes, though, honestly, because you just get that energy from people. And then we just haven't been around each other in so long. I'm like, I need. To, I like people. I like to be around people. So, all right, y'all. So here, if you all can see this, can you all see? Mm -hmm, it looks hungry? so good. Okay. <laughs> now, you just said you're making her hungry. Uh, see, and it's like crispy. Well, I used to come on over. <laughs> y'all come on over <laughs> yeah. all right and so i'm gonna take these out and i'm not gonna fry all of them i'm just gonna do this first batch i'll fry the rest later so you gotta let that rest because we about to wrap this up in a second oh you know what y'all i'm gonna nope i'm gonna turn this back on and the reason why i'm gonna turn it back on sometimes it's better to have a deep fryer because of this or to bake them Okay, because um, I noticed that these two in the corner, they didn't cook. They're not crispy. And like I said, you do not want these to not be crispy. It's not the business when they're not. This one's cool. I got a couple more that need to be cooked a little longer. So we're going to go in there. In the meantime, can you all see all the way over here? I'm sure you can. I'm going to just do a couple of these, put a couple of these inside of here. And um, can I get another plate? Okay. I think this is good. We'll take this out. And this one. All right. And I'm going to show you all. A little plate. And I have the fire up kind of high on my tortilla shells because I just want to get a light crisp. Can y'all see that? And how gold and brown and that panko just covering that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this over here. So, yep, you can prepare this stuff ahead of time. But, you know, your, your frying you want to do absolutely last. You don't want to fry until you're about to serve. Because if you do fry it and then you don't serve immediately, it's just not and it, it's not right. <laughs> it, it tastes way different. Um, I don't like re I don't like reheating fried food either. Um, so when I do like events and catering, like weddings and stuff, and people want fried food, I always have to set up a whole fry station. Last time I did a wedding was. Did we do a wedding. I did a wedding in last August. That was the last time I did one. And I set up a whole fry station inside of their garage so that as we were, I was, what was as we were battering and frying the things, we would be able to just put it back, put it on the um, buffet table immediately. 
Mm-hmm. So here I got my three little shells, my little babies. Ooh, they hot. Lord, I can't pick that up in my hand. That's hot. And they're like this. And I, oh, when I took them off the heat, I, I um, folded them in half. Can you see? Because that's going to make it easier for me to build my tacos. They're going to already just already sit up. Okay. So we're going to move this back. Can you help me move this back? And Bianca's already chopping. Bianca, you hired. <laughs> She's already chopping my. <laughs> So for everybody watching, I'm just going to invite you all to drop your questions for the chef in the comment section. Um, we will have a short Q&A coming up. So if you have any questions, anything you want to know, anything you want to share, please just put that in the comment section. Yes, please do. And you can ask me anything. You can ask me personal questions. It don't necessarily have to be about the recipe or about cooking, whatever you want to know. How long have I been a vegan chef? Long time, like 21 years. 21 years now. That's a long time to be a chef. And I've been doing it. And I haven't, I told you, I haven't had another job. Like, this is all I've been doing is cooking. <laughs> and cooking in a different way, in different areas, different places. I was a chef at the wind for a couple of years. Um, okay. So. Do you mix this as like a relish on top of it? Yep. Lime yep. And yep. Yep. Uh oh. Yeah, I forgot. You can put it in there. Okay. Yep. Sure. She's going to mix. So she has, let me show you guys first what she did. So she cut up uh, the cabbage, my um, green cabbage. And you see how it's just nice and thin, exactly how you want it. You don't want big old pieces of cabbage, y'all. And then purple cabbage, same thing, nice and thin. You want the purple cabbage, it could be even thinner if you want it than the green, because sometimes it's hard to. And then she put cilantro in there too. So you see our little mixture. This is going to be the topping. For the tacos. Thank you. So, y'all see that? All right. That's my favorite thing to do. And it's really good for anybody who's um, <laughs> allergic to vinegar or has like weird things with vinegar. Yeah. Because they think, oh, well, what's it? Maybe I'll just. <laughs> exactly. So, Bianca was saying too that lime is really good in replacement for vinegar. So, people who have like a vinegar intolerance, we're going to put a little bit of lime juice in here. Excuse me, mommy. Can I go to Z's house because their holiday is at night time? No. Zion, until I'm finished. Don't ask me anything else until I'm finished. Okay, so can I go to Z's house? No, you cannot go to Z's house until I ask his father. Um, Sorry, y'all. Uh, son's asking him to go to his friend's house. Um, so we put a little his bit of lime and I'll put yeah. a little bit of salt. Oh, his dad said yes? Yeah. Okay, well, you can go. I didn't know that. Sorry, y'all. Uh, all right. Here you go. So I put a little lime and a little salt. And for those who've been to Mexico before, you just know, like, their tortillas and they, like, it's just, mm. Man, the first time I went to Mexico and I had the real, I had real tacos, I was like, okay, I don't know what, what they doing over here in the U.S. <laughs> but I will say this, Tacotarian, if you all have not had Tacotarian, they got some bomb tacos. Shout out to uh, Kristen and all the folks over at Taco Tarian. They're friends of mine. I love them, support them. They have a location downtown and um, on Fort Apache, and their tacos are amazing. <laughs> Bianca said she ate there yesterday. So what I'm going to do now is just build up. Uh, okay, so I got my three taco shells. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece inside each one. Smaller piece. Because my, my tacos are little, so. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited about eating. My mouth is literally watering. Probably because I didn't eat breakfast today, too. I'll have just a protein shake. All right. So I got that. That was beautiful. I'm going to put a little bit of sauce. Um, no, I'm going to put a little bit of salsa first on my crispy heart of palm. And I'm doing the salsa next because... I like sauce on top of the crispiness because it just blends together well. So how you build these tacos, that's another thing. Technique is everything. How you build tacos, how you build sandwiches, how you build burgers, it makes a difference. There's a technique to it. You know, you just don't slap, slap it together. So I put the salsa on first. But you can do it any way you want. This is just the way I prefer to do it, especially if I'm going to eat it immediately because it softens up the crispiness a little bit, but just enough. So that you're like, yeah. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put 
my cabbage mixture on here. Hold on, I'm going to cut this a little bit. Because my taco shells are so small, these cabbage pieces are bigger than my taco shells. <laughs> I need one of those taco holders. You know, like one of those three mm -hmm. apartment taco holders. Yeah, I'm going to get me one of those. Ooh, is that a shot? Yes. <laughs> We're playing. We're about to play. We're about to take shots, y'all. Y'all can got me over here about to get tipsy. <laughs> it's Sunday. It's Sunday. And I will take a shot. All right. So I got those three. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put my chipotle sauce on top. <laughs> Man, I am so excited about this. All right. Okay, and then that's it. Here, I'm about to show you the final, the final, final. Can you all see that? Yeah, I'm going to take a picture too. Can you see? Looks delicious. Thank you. <laughs> These tacos are amazing. Look how little they are. Look at the little babies. See, see my hand. I can like probably eat this in three bites. They're so cute. So if you're doing this for a party, yes, absolutely. You can have them. You can even set them out like on a tray or something like this. Just make sure, you know, that you're kind of building them as you go. I wouldn't have them sitting out for a long time um, without people eating them. So Definitely, you can have them for parties and for you know whatever you whatever you deem necessary. So what we what we got? Um, <laughs> All right, y'all. So we can do a, a question and answer, and we're gonna do a cheers. And she gave us we have tequila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shot of tequila, and you know what? I got these from Mexico. Mm -hmm. I got these shot glasses from Mexico. Like what was it? Three years ago. So Bianca grabbed them. I don't even know if she knew that. All right, cheers. cheers. <laughs> so I just want to start by saying Bianca, yes. you were behind the scenes But you were awesome When Chef said you were hired, I was giggling to myself Because nobody paid attention I'm sure to how the things were Disappearing off of the countertop And it was becoming clean again <laughs> So I'm just waiting for folks to drop Their questions or comments in the chat You had a couple of people Said, what tips do you, uh, Brenda said, what tips do you have um, to save money to cook healthy? That's a good question. So um, it's not expensive to cook healthy. It's just that um, you just have to make sure that you're purchasing real fruits and vegetables. Like, um, for example, with this meal, this meal was super cheap, y'all. I mean, like the heart of palm, you can get a can of the heart of palm for $3 maybe. Then you get a head of cat, two heads of cabbage. You get some salsa, some sour cream, like all this stuff. I think everything that I purchased, even with the tortilla shells, I think I paid. Mm, I bought the dulse today, too, and that added a little bit more. I bought a couple of spices, but I think I spent about $25, if that. I mean, and that, and that was just because I had to buy the dulse and I bought Obey and I was buying, I had to buy some of the spices. But you know, if you already have that stuff then um it's super and that was for a family uh, of seven right because you're sharing with seven family. yeah this is enough for seven it'll be four so you can it's definitely be healthy on the budget you just have to make sure that you're eating the real fruits and vegetables where it becomes expensive with um plant-based food is when you're buying all of the pra packaged products like the garden the veggie burgers the, the veggie chicken the, the, the impossible burger it's cool to eat those things. I personally, we, I mean, if I show you my freezer, we have some of those things, but for the most part, I try to eat from the earth. So I eat a lot of beans. Can you pass me that pot there, right there, that old pot? So I got this old pot that was my great aunt's pot. That's why the pot looked like this. So don't talk about it. This is like a family thing too. <laughs> this pot is crazy looking. I was like, we got to sign this thing some stainless steel. But this is the pot that my great aunt um, Romy used to make greens out of. And let me tell y'all, her greens was the best. But anyway, I have, excuse the thing, but excuse the uh, frost on here. But I soaked some black eyed peas last night. So, um, and I've soaked them in water and I soaked them with some um, bay leaves. But I'm just saying, like, 
that's what we're gonna have for dinner today is this is lunch what we're having there for dinner is black eyed peas rice cornbread and um i don't know maybe some greens or something i'll figure something out but um black eyed peas don't cost a lot beans and rice i eat a lot of there's just so many there's so many ingredients that you can purchase that are just plant-based um that come from the earth and that's going to be the cheapest way to, to eat, eat healthy and eat, eat. Now, I remember we See, did. I'm not going to cook all the recipes that I make. I'm not going to show you how to cook things with the garden and the veggie burgers. And the, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to show you how to make food that comes from like the palm tree or, you know, comes from like the earth. So jackfruit. jackfruit. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot, so many things we can do with jackfruit, y'all. Yes. That's amazing too. Another a mushroom, yes, eggplant, potatoes, like all kinds of things we can turn into just amazing plant-based foods without breaking <laughs> <laughs> Brenda wants to know, and I thought I heard you answer it before, but just in case we didn't cover it, she wants to know, can you use an um, air fryer? She says she uh, need to use start using her. Yes, you can use the air fryer for this recipe. I did cover it um, a little bit early, but it's cool. I was going to say that the air fryer, I'm not a huge fan of. Like I, I'm a fan of it if you're trying to use it for health purposes, not of course. For me, I don't fry a lot of stuff, but when I do want something that's fried, I usually just, you know, just fry it. Um, but the air fryer is very good, and I highly recommend that you use it. And yes, this can be used in the air fryer. The only thing I will say is that when you are doing this batter, you want to make sure that um, your batter is a little thinner because the air fryer, what I find is it doesn't cook all the way through through sometimes so um if your batter is too thick then when you like open up your hard palm instead of it being super crispy and just yummy look at this on the inside where you can't see the wet batter sometimes the wet batter will still be in there I mm. oh my god so to shop on a vegan based diet what'd you say jolina wants to know on a vegan based diet do you have to grocery shop every day Oh, no. <laughs> no, you don't have to grocery shop every day, but you do have to plan. Um, I try to plan as much as possible. I mean, when I'm catering and stuff, naturally I'm planning, but I'd say we go to the grocery store maybe once a week. No, that's about it. I go to the farmers. We go to the farmer's market. Well, take that back. Farmer's market on Wednesdays to get most of my fruits and vegetables. The grocery store on any other day and that's it you don't have to go that often um just just get what you need because usually your fruits and vegetables if you store them properly they'll last for about a week and i just want to share a quick little there was another list. question do you grocery shop every day was there another question mm, yeah we answered it already it was about the year oh. prior um so i was doing I feel like I'm missing a great. <laughs> Aisha said she feel like she's missing a great mom party. <laughs> I don't know if we bring our kids in here. You all gotta come. You gotta come over one day, Aisha, for real. And come over when Bianca's here. We be over here smoking and <laughs> cooking. And she helps me and momming, talking about because she has two little girls, um, that are ages four and five, and it's I and six. So, I love the fact that this this is just an organic thing. You guys have done us a great service by sharing this information, but the energy that the two of you shared is just like, hey, homegirl, come on down here. Yeah. We'll do this thing. And it like really worked. And it's funny because this is what we've been talking about in our campaign planning about um, how it bring, food brings people together and we're saving. And you hit it on the head when you said that you guys yeah. exchange cannabis and you feed her. And that's exactly the type of things we've been expressing that we need in our community again. Yes, so absolutely, absolutely. And luckily I have, I, luckily I have some great neighbors, Bianca and her husband too. They're, they're fantastic. And so um, it's all about, you know, the community and the love and eating together. And I'm all about that, especially like this year. I'm like, let's get together. Let's have, let's fellowship. Let's cook together. Let's have some healthy Let's get some healthy recipes going, especially for this summer, um, and just have some fun and get together again, especially centered around food, because um, usually when I have um, events and stuff, and even on the weekends, like what I said I was going to start doing, just a side note, it's just having food out. That's another thing, because a lot of times people who have children, 
they're like, um, my children don't eat healthy. And I'm like, you got to have healthy snacks around. So, for example, I have a bowl over here and it has oranges, it has peaches, it has bananas. Bianca can bring it. So, this is my fruit. Uh oh, my banana fell out. Well, now Sydney wants to know is there mangoes in here? There's different things, the, the little oranges, whatever. And I have that on the table, so if my son gets hungry, then he can just grab a piece of fruit. You know, you got to make the food accessible. And then um, I saw a really great tip. Jessica Alba, who owns Honest, the Honest Company, which is who I love, she did a, um, a little YouTube video, and I said I was going to do something similar, where she just makes kind of like a charcuterie, a uh, crudite board for her family on the weekends, and it has, like, cheeses. Well, they eat cheese and meat, but I would do, like, vegan cheeses and nuts and sauces and things like that and you just leave it out on the counter for the day for your family and if they hungry they can come and graze from the we call it grazing boards and they can just come and graze from the graze boards and you don't have to worry about running in the kitchen can i have a snack can i have this can i have that you know you don't have to run <laughs> to the kitchen in four or five times and everything is out <laughs> so yeah there's so many things to do especially centered around family and stuff i love cooking and i love doing this so well Thanks for doing that. We just want to go ahead and bring Tamara on. Um, I'll let her introduce herself and tell you what she does here at Make It Work. But before we um, let Tamara get going, Alcinia wanted to know, is there any formal training needed to become a vegan chef at all? No, I had no formal training. So my background is actually in music and entertainment. And um, I did uh, artist development for Universal Music Group for years. That was my whole life. I was going to be in the entertainment industry as an executive. And then I opened up a vegan restaurant um, in Atlanta like 20 years ago. I invested in a vegan restaurant because I was making money. I didn't have children. I wasn't married. So, and I was switching over my diet. And so I invested in a vegan restaurant. And then I had to find out how to save my investment. So I started learning how to cook. <laughs> Well, look at that's that. It. And then I just I, deemed myself a vegan chef because after a while, after you've been doing this for a minute, you're like, okay, I can crown myself your resume. now because <laughs> I've been doing this for years. So no, there is no formal training here. I don't even recommend people go to culinary school unless you just, that's some, don't go to culinary school if you want to be a chef. If you want to be a chef, vegan or regular or whatever it is, then just work in a restaurant and start from the start from like an entry level position and then just learn how to cook and that way you can have someone pay you to teach you how to cook instead of you paying someone to teach you how to cook and then you can learn all aspects of running a restaurant too so the best chefs that i've known are not are not formally trained they are um they just work from the bottom from you know start from the bottom now we're here <laughs> <laughs> all right Tamara, you have the floor Good afternoon. My name is Tamara Favors. I am the new ambassador coordinator at Make It Work. Um, so some of you have actually heard me call you or email you to set up um, interview time. But um, also, I want to introduce um, our following um, our 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 next eat to live series will be next month in June. Then also, we have a private Facebook group, um, Power Builders, and you can just on um on facebook and you you can be added there and thank you for your time so i just want to thank you ladies again for putting this on um like Tamara said um eat to live is a series of events that we have scheduled out over the month um it started with an idea um um from some eating on a budget basically and after we started having conversations um, in the community, we found out that there was um, a need for grandparents and parents to supplement meals. And I don't know if you guys can hear me well, it kind of is giving me feedback a little bit. Um, but so we just wanted to continue to find ways for parents and families to supplement meals and also to put wealth back into the community. And it seems like you guys have that system going as we speak about, and we want to see more of that. And so we just appreciate you guys for your time. Um, and we're going to keep on continuing this. Week. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to go to makeitworknevada.org um, and look at our website. We have upcoming events and we'd love to see you guys there. Thank you for joining us today. Till next awesome. time. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you this really quickly. Is it too late to do the giveaway? 
No, ma'am. I forgot all about it. Go ahead. One of our aprons. <laughs> no, so you all can let me know. You know, if nobody answers right away, but the question is um, regarding the heart of palm. So, can anyone? Does anybody remember um, where the heart of palm comes from? Um, where does it come from? Oh God! It comes from the inside of the palm tree. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> So the April will be sent to you. I just need you to email me uh, your address, and then I'll ship it to you. I got a couple of other aprons to ship out, too. So, yep. Congratulations. And thank you. You're exactly right. <laughs> thank you, Chef. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye.